Techbusters, proudly brought to you by Ericsson. Good evening and welcome to Techbusters. We are in the studio with uh, Pokemon Anastasio, who's probably on like level 417 already and hasn't crashed his car yet. Thanks for joining us. We are going to have an interesting evening of technology everything. Yes, indeed. And of course, Pokemon Go is still big news around the world, although the, the share price seems to be uh, dropping off a bit, but we'll have to monitor Pokemon Go with great interest. But you can monitor our conversation, follow the conversation, join in the conversation. It's hashtag TechBusters and uh, follow us at CNBC Africa and tell us how technology is impacting your life. But before we go anywhere, let's have a look at what's coming up on the show tonight. Tonight on TechBusters, we chat to Kirsty Sharman of Webfluential and Aki interviews Galen Whitaker, CEO of Rush, a courier company that promises to get you the best price with one click of a button. All this and more tonight on TechBusters. Well, if you've uh, picked up the latest copy of Stuff Magazine this month, you'll notice that my colleague uh, Toby has been talking about it now, and I'm really amazed uh, and impressed by this new insert that they've included in the magazine, where you, they're using a WeChat and um, you know virtual, not virtual reality, but you're, you're basically code. giving QR codes yeah. and you're allowing people to shop and buy products at some ridiculously low prices. They're very good, yeah. So you use WeChat in its wallet, you scan yeah. a product using a QR code. Uh, you pay, we've, re we've negotiated a discount on the product and WeChat is giving a rebate. So you get, you know, a Xiaomi phone that's normally 2,000 Rand for 900 Rand, uh, an Acer laptop that's normally 5,000 Rand mm -hmm. for 2,500. And it's really great, incredible connection, delivers it the next day. Oh, and, really? uh, and it's just a way of turning a magazine into an e-commerce channel. We, uh, we're very excited yeah. about it. Well, this is why this is a first. I'm not aware of this being done anywhere else in the world. So you've basically created an online shopping platform using a QR code and an app like WeChat. And it's quite amazing. Indeed. It's indeed. the first of its kind, isn't it? Well, it's certainly the first in Africa. Yeah. Uh, there may be some precedents the rest of the world, but mm. we're, doing, uh, we're doing what we think is really the next generation of e-commerce, right? Yeah, like you've yeah. got the phone in your hand, you've got a, a, a payment mechanism using uh, WeChat's wallet and SnapScan, and bang, you can, uh, you can get a really good product really quickly, really cheaply delivered straight to you and it is so easy to oh, use there we go. that there even we go. Toby Shapshack could use it. <laughs> <laughs> are you doing it next month as well? We are indeed. Cool stuff. Well check it out. This month's edition of Stuff Magazine, there's some cool tech and some incredible prices. Don't say we didn't warn you. We live in a social media age where people are becoming known as influencers and brands want to interact with them and people with a significant social media presence want to interact with brands. And one of the South African companies that's doing particularly well in this regard and is the recent winner of the South African chapter of the Tel Aviv, of startup Tel Aviv, is Webfluential. Joining me in studio is Kirsty Sharman, who's the head of global operations. Firstly, well done on winning startup Tel Aviv. And secondly, how does it feel? Um, well, thank you very much. We are extremely excited. I think when I, when I went back to the office and told the guys that, that we were chosen as the winner, we were, we, they were extremely excited. And I, I think especially because they were, as we, as we move more into the global market for them, they, they just want to understand more about international markets. Israel, for one, specifically, is they've managed to export a lot of technology. You look at companies like Waze, companies like WeWork, for example, that started in Israel and have now scaled out of the country. So Hotmail is another good Hotmail example. Hotmail is another good example, yes. So I think the guys, that, the guys back at the office were really excited that we're going to get some insights into how those companies did it and how they managed to be so successful. And just tell us a little bit about Webfluential and what it is that you do. So Webfluential is an online platform. We help connect brands and social influencers across the globe. So I always find the best way to describe this is by giving an example. But if you essentially can say a brand will want to create converse, conversation online about a new product or a new service that they might offer and social influencers are the best people to tell those stories because they 
create content every day and they communicate with a specific audience and they understand the needs of that audience. So we help brands be able to connect with the right social influencers, tell stories and ultimately positively influence consumers. And you found there's a real market for this, not only in South Africa, but you've expanded to several other territories, including the UK, and, and it's doing very well there. Yeah, I think uh, we, we started in South Africa. It was a really great, it was a really great testing ground for us to be able to um, use the technology in market, work with agencies, work with brands, see what worked, what didn't work. And now that we move into other regions, we're being able to bring some of those lessons back home to South Africa and help brands run better influencer marketing campaigns. And it's a really simple to use platform, isn't it? You log in, you register yourself. The brands that are interested can get hold of the influencers and vice versa. Yeah, the, the platform is quite easy to use. We, we invest quite a lot in building technology for influencers as well as we do for brands. So on the influencer side of our platform, you can log on, for example, say you're a rising YouTube stars, you, you can set up media kits, you can have booking forms. We actually empower our influencers to run their own little businesses essentially and actually be able to operate in isolation. They've got chat rooms where they can collaborate with brands, schedule content, reporting tools, for example. And then on the other side, if a brand wants to run a campaign with multiple influencers, the technologies just help them be able to do that at scale. So this is a good thing. What do you think winning a competition like Startup Tel Aviv will do for Webfluential? It turns you into a, a global brand. Mm. So I think winning a competition like that is exciting for us for sort of two reasons. One, because it helps, it helps us shine a light back onto South Africa to say we've actually got really great technology entrepreneurs in this country. There were great entries into the competition. We just happened to come out on top. But if I, if I look around me and I look at some of the tech that's being built in this market, it's incredible. And it is totally capable of playing on a global scale. So I hope we can be an example into the market to say, hey guys, look at South Africa and look at the tech that they're building. And then on the other side, I think it's exciting for us as a business to be able to get sight and, and chat to entrepreneurs and VCs and engineers in other markets that have built technology and successfully scaled it out of Africa before. So I think, you know, for us, that's really exciting just to be able to talk to the right people, chat to them, what I'm sure they faced quite a lot of the same challenges we're facing as we scale our product into new markets. So be able to learn those lessons, bring them back home and teach everyone in the office about all of those incredible things. Well, all I can say is good luck and obviously if Aki, can, Aki Anastasia can understand it, anyone can understand it. Good luck. Thank you, Toby. So, how's this for a clever startup? You know, when you're looking for a price and you want to send something from point A to point B and you've got to go through the internet and you've got to find prices there and prices there and prices there. Well, Rush is a very clever company, rush.co.za and Glenn Whitaker is with me who's the founder and he says, well, we can solve this problem. We can get you the best price with one click of a button. Is that right, Glenn? Yeah, it's been a long road, uh, two years of uh, a lot of development, but uh, we're finally there. We launched last year. Um, had some investment from NASPERS and uh, yeah, I think we, we're where we are on today and we, we want to disrupt the career industry. So what does Rush exactly do? Rush is a career aggregator, so we're making it simple for people to send parcels anywhere in South Africa. Uh, you put in your parcel details, um, our algorithm works out the cheapest way to get your parcel, your parcel 232 postal codes in South Africa. So how, how exactly does that work? Uh, are you plugged into the other systems? Uh, if I had to go, let's say, to a courier company and look for the same quote that I get on your website, will it give me the same price or do you guys give me a better price? We, we give you a better price. We got volume based pricing um, from all our couriers. So if you phoned up your courier directly and you asked them for a quote, you'll be able to get a uh, cheaper on Rush. And how many uh, courier services are on your website already? I mean, how many are supported? What, wh how many prices are you comparing? We've got five fully integrated couriers at the moment. We're trying to keep it uh, down to uh, quite a few um, because we have to do a massive integration with the careers into the API. So we push a lot of documents to them and we get uh, wables to print as well. So you don't have to fill out your wables again. The, the system itself, uh, it's pretty user friendly, right? You simply enter the postal code which you're in and you can send. So it's only South Africa or you plan to expand to the rest of Africa? The plan is obviously to go international. Um, we, we're talking to a number of people now about the international expansion, but we want to perfect South Africa first if we can perfect it. Uh, but it's, it is a, is a long haul, there's a lot of uh, complication in the algorithms, all the postal codes, all the different pricing, so there's about 150,000 permutations per one courier. 
Wow, that's incredible. And how did the idea come up? I mean, you're a young entrepreneur. You've come up with this idea. How difficult was something like this to implement? Very. Um, I think uh, if I'd known how difficult it was, I probably wouldn't have gone down this route. But uh, it was two years ago. Um, I was in the logistics bring business, bringing in stuff from overseas uh, for the promotional industry. And uh, I just thought how cool it would be for me to be able to get different pricing instead of having to drive volume through one career and then jump ship to another career and start with horrible pricing again until you drive volume again. So Rush drives all the volume. Our customers give us their volume and we then negotiate rates on their behalf. With everybody moving to online platforms and everybody wanting to do something, the small offices, the young entrepreneurs, is that who your market is and is this market growing quite aggressively? Absolutely. I mean, we, we don't want to play in the, that, that big market. Um, so the e-commerce businesses are not our game. Our game is that man on the street that doesn't want to go in his car and stand in a queue and go to a shopping mall and pay exorbitant rates. He's that guy that can simply go into Rush whether he's moving one parcel a year or 100 parcels a year. Uh, the SMEs are very important to us. Um, we think there's a massive opportunity there. Those little guys that are moving 10 or 50 or 100 parcels a month, they'll be able to get better pricing with Rush. So give us the procedure. You go on to rush.co.za. Uh, how does it work? Yeah, so simple. Go on to rush.co.za, register, um, type in all your details, all your company details, because you can claim back for the VAT. We send you a tax invoice on every single transaction. Once you put your parcel details in and you tell us where it's going to, we give you five different prices from all the different career companies. And we offer, also offer four services as well. We've got a pronto service where we've got on-demand companies in there, where if you want to pick up and deliver straight away, we can do that. Or your normal same day overnight and budget. Budget typically being the, the cheapest. We've, uh, we've just integrated with all our address books, so it's quicker and easier just to load your stuff. Um, it'll always save it there. Go to the payment gateway and strikes a credit card or you do an EFT and and you're on your way. Is this unique globally? I, I'm not aware of any other businesses that are doing something similar to this. There, there are a couple of companies out there that have tried. Um, two things where we're very unique is one, we have a printable wable solution. So once you've filled in all that data, you don't want to fill it out again when your career arrives. And two, we give you pricing in real time. A lot of other companies send away to careers, get the prices back. So in a couple, between two to four hours, you'll start getting your prices back. We display that price within a second. Very interesting stuff. Well, there you go. Glenn Whitaker, who is the CEO, founder of Rush.co.za. A very interesting startup. And we'll monitor them quite closely to see how they do. But uh, good luck. Standard Bank is the biggest bank in Africa and it has a massive footprint across multiple countries. But what happens if you're in one country and you want to be able to see all of your information in all of the countries that you run your business or have banking accounts in? This is where their brand new app comes in. It currently works in six different regions and it'll expand to another four across Sub-Saharan Africa. Aki and I went to go have a look at this very clever new digital way Standard Bank is doing their banking. So we are building a digital business. We think that our customers would want to choose to interact with us first on a digital device, particularly on a mobile platform. So just last month we did 80 million transactions on our mobile platform and customers are embracing the mobile assets that we put out there. So if you look at the transactions that they can do, they can open accounts, they can do offshore payments. So it's really much easier, much more convenient. They can do it whenever they want to, wherever they want to, and it's really resonating with customers really well. But what I find quite interesting is that you, you're like tying the dots, um, you know, from, you know, trading online, for example, to, um, you know, um, even kids and yes. the, the new kids application that you've got. So everything is moving digital. You've got a complete picture of what your customer is doing at any one time. And I'm sure this brings interesting insights into your business. Yes, so we see that the future will be around data analytics and our ability to use the rich data that we've got about our customers to extract insights, to make them much more proactive, relevant offers and to engage with them at the right time in their lives. So it's not about how they bank, but it's about how they live their lives. And we want to be a part of that and a partner for their growth. And it's not just in sort of millennials. We're seeing a lot of our people who are using our apps are octogenarians. So, and in corporate world, we're seeing, you know, three quarters of the JSE top 40 companies use our business online app. So it's really right across the spectrum. And even people getting social grants are using our sort of feature phone um, banking and USSD banking. So it's really, digital is, is it's covering everybody and changing the world fundamentally. You know, if you look at Nigeria, for example, 
uh, something like 88% of the internet pages are rendered onto a mobile device. If you look at uh, Kenya, 95% of Facebook is rendered onto a mobile device. So people want to use the mobile device and we've seen that we have to compete with mobile network operators in these countries as well to make sure that our bank is relevant to customers. So we want to make sure that we're agnostic of the device, agnostic of the networks and that as Standard Bank we deliver a seamless, easy to use payment experience on your phone that's convenient to customers. Are you seeing changes in how people pay for things and the technologies that they use? Because I'm finding myself using my smartphone you know, as a, as, a, as a scan, you know, I'm paying a lot more invoices yes. and stuff using my smartphone. Yes, yeah, so we do think that, you know, e-commerce has lagged a bit, so we'll see e-commerce will pick up and a lot of people then will use their digital devices to do e-commerce payments. But we see increasingly the digital platforms moving into the physical world. So Snapscan, you mentioned Snapscan, we've got 220,000 customers using Snapscan, Snapscan regularly. You know, using it by scanning a QR code or using a beacon, using biometric recognition to pay. And we see over time that for credit cards, for example, the credit card will be rendered directly onto the smartphone device. Not tomorrow, but over the next couple of years. And then you'll be able to pay with the smartphone. And it'll be really good because you get much richer receipting in terms of you get the warranty for the, for the, the goods that you're buying. You can use it to tie into our UCount loyalty program. So we think that increasingly it will move towards the digital platform, particularly as we see millennial adoption of this. It really taking off. So now when I ask Peter Schliebusch what keeps him awake at night, I bet you he's going to say security because security must be a big issue. You guys are holding so much data um, and I'm trusting the bank. I trust the bank more than I trust social networks, for example. How big a focus and an issue is security for you guys? I mean, it must be on top of your list, but it must give you headaches. Yes, yeah, so, Aki, security is a big headache and you know the crime syndicates are becoming much more sophisticated and they're much more global as well. And as we make these digital platforms available, you know, they also look to take advantage of it. So we spend an incredible amount of time, effort and resources on security. I would say that security is our number one priority, then availability of all of our services mm -hmm. and then make sure that we do new stuff on top of that. But you know, bank is a it's a business of trust. So we have to have security buttoned down and it's really, really important for us. Tell us about the Kids app that's uh, going to be launched very shortly. Yeah, so we're launching a Kids app which we're really excited about. It's got a lot of rich gamification and it's, it's themed around the sort of big five animals in South Africa. And it encourages kids to do chores, to do different tasks, and it teaches them about how to save, how to spend. It's also linked to the parents' smart app so that parents can, can see how it's going as well. We want to make a positive contribution to improving the savings culture and get people excited about saving and learning about money and financial, uh, just good basic common hygiene practice. Peter Schlibusch, thanks for joining us on Thank CNBC. You. So we're in the heart of Santon right now. We're here to interview another one of the big mobile manufacturers. And this is a company called Xiaomi. And they're a very interesting company because they're not only doing mobile phones, but they own all sorts of other interesting technologies, which we will expose to you in just a second. Um, and their headquarters are situated right here in Santon. In South Africa, they're quite a newish brand. So you might not have heard about the name Xiaomi yet, but it's a name that you will hear of because these guys are big in China, really big in China, and they make really cool devices. So let's find out where Mr. RJ van Spandonk is from Xiaomi. Hi. Hey, hey Stefan, how's it? Looking for RJ? RJ? Yeah. Uh, RJ, uh, Aki is here. Where is he? Hey! Aki, how are you? Good to see you. RJ, good to see you. What on earth is this? Now, this is a very interesting device because I saw this at the Consumer Electronics Show. I've seen it at quite a few devices. This is the same device that the guys from Segway make, right? This is the Ninebot Mini. Yeah. It's made by a company called Ninebot in yeah. China. Yeah. It was, uh, Xiaomi made an investment in Ninebot and Ninebot subsequently bought Segway, the inventors as the, of the human transporter. And this is a very affordable execution of the original Segway, which we hope to bring into the country before the holiday season at the end of the year. Now, this is one of the devices you can actually add a tablet to as well, and they're talking about you know, customizing this and making it like a mini robot, right? We will, we will show it later. We can actually manage uh, this particular device difficult? from our smartphone. Huh? So why don't you okay. step right. onto it? Okay. And you hold my shoulders. Okay, there we go. And you, okay, there now, we go. Now no, no, the just, just, just go a little bit forward. Lean forward like this. Oh, there I've got this. I've you got go. This. You can go backwards. Check it out, lean backwards. It's all about balance and everything, but it's a very cool device. And, all right, let's put this over here for a second. But RJ, this is an amazing brand. 
Do you talk about all the devices over here? And I was talking about who, who exactly is Xiaomi? Xiaomi is a very interesting company. It started in 2010. And the whole philosophy of the company is to bring technology to people at the best possible price point in the market. If you look at this particular uh, device, the Mi 5, it's yeah. essentially the same specification as two other Asian smartphone brands that have been uh, launched in the country recently. It's a Snapdragon 820 processor. But what is the most attractive and the most amazing thing of this smartphone, it comes in at up to 5,000 Rand cheaper for a comparable device. When, when I first heard about this brand and I looked at the technology and I looked at the price, I said, hmm, the quality is pretty good, but the price is really good as well. So that's the kind of philosophy yes. of the company. And the other interesting thing that I find out about the company, and I want you to tell us about this, on how you update the software, because that's quite interesting, is that the, it's almost done like, um, like globally, the users share the bugs that they come across and they get updated almost instantly. Absolutely. So the operating uh, system is called Mi UI. Yeah. Uh, it's an adaptation of uh, stock standard uh, Android. Uh, it's being developed by the developers within Xiaomi, but we tap into the base of uh, enthusiastic users and developers around the right. world that the uh, can can every um, version of the operating system, the developer version, is launched in Chinese every Friday and the international versions every two or three weeks. And we allow our users to take it apart, find where the bugs are, but also come up with suggestions on how we can uh -huh. improve the operating system. And on a weekly basis, those suggestions get incorporated. And then the next week for the Chinese version and two or three weeks later for the international version, people can download the latest version. So it's really tapping into the, the common knowledge and the experience of our users and trying to come out with the best possible operating so system. You've got quite a range of devices. That's right. This is the this is the flagship device. This That's is the called Mi 5. The, the Mi 5. But I see you go from this device right up to a well this is this is more of a tablet device and this is more of a phablet device, right? Yeah. So you've got you've got quite a comprehensive range. How, how many phones do you actually bring in? Uh, we're currently bringing in uh, six phones. Yeah. Let me start with the Redmi 2. This is yeah. a very interesting device. Why is it an interesting device? Because it really, really shows what the company stands for. So this is our entry-level device. It's a 4.7 inch screen, um, but where it really stands apart is under the hood. This is a 2000 Rand entry-level phone, yeah. but this is the cheapest phone in the market that is ready for what we currently call virtual reality which is an Essence Video 360. We all know the Google Cardboard viewer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we know that on Facebook you can uh, watch these amazing videos that give you a complete yeah. view of everything that's what's happening around you. Now, in order to experience that, your phone needs a gyroscope and it needs a compass. And that's most a phones, most phones at 2000 Rand don't have it. The next phone out there that is fully VR ready is a three and a half thousand Rand phone. And that's when the value proposition of Xiaomi comes alive. It's when people start to understand that, that in order to have the best possible and the most advanced experience on a smartphone, we give you the best possible price in the market. And what's your backup like? I mean, if, if you crack a screen and all the device is faulty, whatever the case may be, do you have a service center? Like, like, like any other brand in South Africa that plays in the premium space, uh, we have full service warranty uh, for 12 months. Uh, we typically replace the unit if it's in warranty and it's a manufacturer's uh, problem. Uh, but even when people uh, crack their screen, we can we can mm. swap out units or repair, repair the unit in country. Yeah, and the interesting thing that I'm looking at over here, is you make a really great premier quality headphone over here. I see you've got uh, these kind of devices and you can't really see it in camera, but it's pretty solid. Um, the quality is pretty good on these headphones. It is. Um, we, we do an extensive range of accessories. Probably the most exciting one that we're launching uh, very, very soon is the Mi Band 1S. This is an activity tracker. Xiaomi is one of the top three wow. uh, wearable companies in the world. Yeah. The other two are Fitbit and Apple. Mm -hmm. This is a 399 Rand fit, uh, activity tracker with a heart rate monitor. Wow, a heart rate monitor in here? A heart rate monitor. Where does it read the heart rate from? 
from, uh, from your pulse. Ah. There's the sensor. That's quite clever. And what is this going to be retailing for? 399 Africa? rands. That's impressive. Not bad. Again, it goes to show what this brand stands for, is to mm -hmm. bring the best possible technology, the lowest possible price, without a single compromise. Well, that's it for tonight. Thank you for joining us. I'm sorry about Aki Anastasia. There's just no excuse for him. Yeah, and I'm sorry about Toby Shapshek, and you're probably watching your screen. If you're playing Pokemon, no, he's not one of the monsters on screen, okay? He's a real person. But, you know, you never know. We might have uh, Toby Chu as a future character on Pokemon in the future. But anyway, I digress. We'd love to hear your comments on the show. Email us, techbusters at abn360.com. Tweet us at CNBC Africa. I'm at Aki Anastasio on Twitter. He's at Shapshek. We'll see you next week. Toby Chu.